You join me at another EV installation today and we're going to be fitting the Pulsar Pro from Wallbox. Now you might recognize this unit from a previous video with Gary, but that was the Pulsar Max. The Pulsar Pro is designed for more commercial installations. With built-in 4G connectivity and a two-year data plan, makes remote management, auto updates, and setup really, really easy. The customer is also going to be trialing this unit on their property as they have a big commercial project coming up and want to tap into the functionality and the power sharing option, which can share up to 100 wall box chargers. They're also going to be cashing in on their driveway when it's empty with community charging as well. So I've scoped the job, it looks straightforward enough, so what could possibly go wrong? So we start this job by lifting the carpets in the bedroom and hallway so we can get access to the floorboards and happy to say as well that the customer is redecorating so all these lovely carpets are getting replaced. The consumer unit is located on the other side of the property so this EV Ultra cable from Doncaster Cables is going to have to be installed and run through the floor space and through the joists. And yes, all the joists are pointing the wrong way, meaning they're all going to have to be drilled. Lifting the board, we can see the mess left behind from the previous electrician. This property has had a partial rewire in the past, and I can see that the cables enter the wall cavity. Although I'm not here to look at that, I have made the customer aware, just in case it's something they want to look into at a later date. Multi-tooling out the tongs to get the boards lifted so I could make the ideal run, making sure as well to knock out all the nails and please remember that the floor space is not a dumping ground. Take your rubbish with you. Once all the boards were lifted and a 25mm hole was drilled in all the joists, we were able to drill through to the external wall through the floor space ready for the cable. The run was roughly 25 meters, so this was run out on the driveway and threaded through and just my luck, it went in first time. So I carefully fed the cable through the joist, making sure not to snag any splinters as it went through. The cable is quite tough and it can withstand quite a beating. We dropped the cable down into the kitchen and then threaded it through into the understairs cupboard where a new consumer unit was going to be fitted to house the protective devices for the Pulsar Pro and the all important single phase clamp power meter. Moving back outside we start to dress the EV Ultra cable down the wall and across to the Pulsar Pro's final location. So out of the box, the Pulsar Pro is a really small and compact unit. You can remove this tag here which lets you take off the rear back plate and fix that to the wall. You can have it rear entry on this as well, but we're coming in through the bottom on this one. Three fixings banged in and the wall box quite simply drops onto the wall plate and clicks into place. And it's secured at the bottom with these two Torx screws. Removing the cover, we take the ribbon to the front of the charger off and we can start by getting our cable fed in and connected into the terminations. Being sure to connect the CPC into the PE2 terminal, which is for PME supplies in the UK, as the Wallbox Pulsar Pro comes with pen fault protection built in. Those connections made, we can terminate the data cables here, which communicate with the clamp power meter back at the mains end. Finally, we're going to make the correct selections for the EV charger, so important to have the installation guide at hand. Here we can see a selector switch which we're going to turn to 7, which allows the full 32 amps. There's also a couple of sliders in here. The first one is the power boost, which we're going to slide from NT to T because we fitted the CT clamp on this installation. There's also a power sharing slider as well, but as we've only got one EV charger, we're going to slide this to NT2. This is a great feature as one of the things we keep saying on EV installs is to future proof them. You might be thinking about one car today, but with 2035 looming, a two EV car family might not be that far away. Over to the mains end and we're going to start preparing the consumer unit by first drilling out the holes for the tails and the EV Ultra cable. Back inside we can thread the tails in and start making all the connections before getting it mounted to the wall. Although an understairs cupboard is like a second home to most electricians, this one was reasonably spaced. So much so, it managed to fit me and a cameraman inside with still enough room to make all the connections. Making off and dressing the EV Ultra cable is straightforward enough and we connect it into a 32 amp double pole type A RCBO in its own consumer unit. And I've also spitted some spare MCBs for the customer for future expansion. So onto that power meter. 
going to be installed on the DIN rail alongside the MCBs and RCBOs and it has a few jobs. One being to watch the loads coming into the property and making sure they don't exceed the rated incoming supply current. But it can also manage the power coming in from your solar PV array by diverting that energy directly to the car and not exporting it back to the grid which means that you are maximizing the total consumption of your solar array. Now, we don't have solar PV on this installation, but if the customer ever decided to let their roof do some generating, we can activate the EcoBoost function on the Pulsar Pro by connecting a reference 230 volt supply into the top of the power meter. Those data connections are made in the bottom with brown and blue being the 12 volt supply from the EV charger and the orange, white and white orange are the current drawn from the property via the CT clamp. I'm clamping the CT onto the main tails, making sure that the arrow is pointing in the direction of current flowing into the property. Finishing off with terminating into the double pole RCD, and as previously mentioned, we've installed a separate consumer unit on this installation, as there was no spare ways in the existing board, and it makes it look a lot neater. But here's an interesting thought. Will the type AC RCD in the existing board be affected by the potential DC currents from the electric vehicle chargers? Let us know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Now with all the connections made and the test results obtained for the EIC, it's time to get on to commissioning and it couldn't be easier with the Pulsar Pro. Going into the installation guide, we can see the QR code on the back, which we scan to download the My Wallbox app. And once in, we create an account and you can register your charger by scanning the QR code on the side of it. And that's it. The Pulsar Pro comes with an integral 4G connection and it can connect to Wi-Fi as well. So setting this thing up couldn't be easier. Now, some of you keener viewers would have noticed my schoolboy error at the beginning of this installation where I said, what could possibly go wrong? Well, we did encounter an issue, something which the customer wasn't aware of before they ordered their electric vehicle and booking the work with us. And here it is, a looped supply. And there's no denying this one, I have two cables coming into this installation and it's definitely looped. The not sure box on the G99 form can't be ticked here. And this is a very common issue that lots of electricians are finding when they're going out installing EV charge points, turning up and it's a looped supply and not realizing the issues that can be created on that incoming cable by installing the additional loads. Fortunately, we did notice this one and it went in on our G99 form prior to the installation starting. The DNO has given permission for us to connect onto the supply as they are satisfied that the maximum demand will not be exceeded. And I've also written in their notice that they will be in contact to discuss unlooping the supply, which will be done for the customer at no additional charge. However, the neighbor's garden may have to be dug up. If you haven't heard of a loop supply before, and if your incoming supply looks like this, then check out this video which explains the problem. Well, this job has been a dream. Cable install was great, runs were straightforward, but for me, the Wallbox Pulsar Pro was so easy to install. From fitting it to the wall to setting it up on the My Wallbox app, it couldn't have been easier. And with that integrated 4G, it is out of the box ready to charge your car. And with the customer wanting to set up for destination charging, that also couldn't be easier through the Wallbox app. And if you want to see how Gary and the team installed the Wallbox Pulsar Max, then click the video right here.